AI actually it's very new for us so let's let's actually it's fantastic this just shows everything where it should be it's basically important to uh, understand what he focuses on uh, uh, because we we need to be able to assist him in what he's doing so it's important for us to understand what's important for the procedure and what's important for uh, for him to increase his confidence in the procedure Now, point-of-care ultrasound has been around for a while now, but artificial intelligence with point-of-care ultrasound is a new advancement that is very much in its infancy. I'm about an hour southeast of Paris in France, and Dr. Dalvaux, who I'm going to spend the day with, is an anesthesiologist specializing in ultrasound-guided regional anesthesia nerve blocks. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. And he's at the forefront of this ultrasound and artificial intelligence evolution. I have my scrubs on now, and Dr. Delvo should be in this operating room just here. Dr. Delvo, hey, ça va? Hello. Let's do a bit of a COVID handshake there. How are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you. How did you specifically get into the use of uh, point of care ultrasound? Uh, I'm, I've been practicing anesthesiology as a diplomed anesthesiologist for more than 15 years. We, we do a lot of peripheral regional, regional anesthesia. This is not local anesthesia. This allows the anesthesia of a whole area of the body, like for example a, a hand, a forearm, a wrist, a foot, an ankle. And we can do that by putting local anesthetic uh, beside the nerve that goes to that specific region. We identify the nerves with ultrasound and we inject local anesthetic. It's done up front. You have to inject very small amounts of local anesthetic to see where you are. And where you see where it's, where it's dilating here, it means that you are. I'm in the right position. This is what I want. If we inject into a blood vessel, into a vein, or into an artery, we should see it right away. We should we, we should stop immediately. Otherwise, this could co this would lead to conversions and even cardiac arrest. So this is very serious. And if we are too close, if we are inside the nerve, we could damage the nerve, and sometimes in a permanent way. So this is critical also for the, for the safety. And actually, ultrasound help us to evaluate very well the distance between the tip of the needle and the, the location of the nerve. artificial intelligence. Um, first I'm looking for the artery actually. The artery is here. This is the main landmark and I'm looking for the bone landmark. This is the first rib and this is the pleura and you can see the other, the other part of the pleura here. First time someone approached you and said hey artificial intelligence we've got this idea we think it might be able to help your procedure of nerve blocking. Yeah. Tell me about that conversation. Well that was very interesting actually. My colleague and I were we thought about it and um, actually I'm quite an enthusiastic about new technologies so I'm eager to discover and it was very exciting. I already have heard about AI and it seems very appealing to me so it was an opportunity to jump in the middle of it to learn to learn really really something of it. Artificial intelligence will be everywhere so also in anesthesiology because it's a, such as far as I understand it's more than powerful and extending everywhere. It's showing the, its efficacy, its efficiency in almost any field. Darn, good to meet you. Same here. Now, you're a data analyst. What is a data analyst and how did you get into that? Hmm. Being a data analyst is uh, part of a long journey, starting with understanding the problem, collecting the data, working on the data, that's a major part of the job. And then the glorious part of building the model and trying to imitate the expert. I think Dr. Delvo is, is special in, in uh, uh, the fact that he's trying to understand data science as well. What was it like the first time you saw the AI work? Wow. <laughs> you know, he showed me at the background the kind of 
pre, pre, preliminary results. It was like, oh God, very impressive already. We can see it shows the nerve correctly. It follows the route correctly. From a data analyst perspective, the purpose was not necessarily to identify uh, the nerve accurately, but rather to assist an anesthesiologist to locate the nerve and be able to follow the nerve as it changes. I use the nerve too as a help to identify the nerve, but after that I turn it off and I do my block as usually. I'm aiming the, the space between radial and ulnar. Novice physicians will uh, uh, be more assisted and uh, uh, expert physicians as uh, Dr. Dervaux will uh, benefit from it more when the anatomy and the echogenicity is low. And of course, uh, we want to see where we can improve. The purpose uh, of the algorithm is to uh, show the location of the nerve or the estimated location of the nerve. For a long time, it has been providing data and data and data and data. It's, it was only after a long time that I could see the first preliminary uh, results. What data are we talking about that fuels the algorithms that you need to yeah. produce CNERV? And in our case, for CNERV, it was a lot of, actually not images, it's a lot of sequences. So it's the sequences that people take as part of their scouting process as the first stage of regional anesthesia. We took a lot of them. We took hundreds and hundreds of sequences. So this is a sciatic block for a, feet, for a foot surgery. Normal landmarks is uh, the popliteal, popliteal fossa and the artery. If I were to say to you, hey, in 15 years time, you're going to be working with this artificial intelligence technology. Wow, I guess. <laughs> Great, fantastic, uh, terrific. Or uh, another word in ick. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Delvaux, it's been a four year journey. Even more. Mm -hmm. How's it been? It, 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 it was great, very interesting. Going at the heart of uh, AI was great. And uh, actually, th th this was a very close relationship with uh, key people, uh, Doron uh, especially. And it's also due to, to the help of the team of uh, Cancy Anesthesia. Who actually, uh, we, we, we developed a reg uh, regional anesthesia culture in our team. So this is really also a teamwork. When do you think CNERV will become commercially available? Well, as far as I know, it's planned for July 2022 for USA and September 2022 in, uh, in Europe. That's not very far away. Not very far away indeed. That'll be a big day for you. Yeah. <laughs> Celebration, glass of champagne? Yes, I already prepared the bottle. <laughs>